this up. So lately in the industry, um, this is where we um, we said we could look at some examples of things we've uh, we've we've come across these last few months, uh, last few weeks maybe. And um, so I've asked you if you've seen anything, and is there anything you would like to to show or address? Um, well, you can go first. I yeah. think I have some um, some things to show in the live demo later. But okay. Then um, yeah, I will, I will pick our uh, next item because uh, this is um, a first draft news. That's a British nonprofit organization and has expertise and, and they call themselves a thought leader on around the challenges posed by a misinformation or information disorder, as they like to call it. And they've rolled out a uh, SMS or text slash WhatsApp course. Uh, protection from deception and it's a free two-week text um, message course to help people prepare for misinformation and I think it's especially aimed at Americans with the, the upcoming elections and um, well you can name a time and uh, every day and a time and of day and then every day a message appears in your say your whatsapp with images and extra links and uh, it looks like this and I thought it was uh, quite interesting so let me um, let me show the example. These are some screenshots I took from the lessons I uh, I followed. So they do definitions. You get these kinds of images about what is disinformation, what is misinformation. Another one was about tactics and techniques. And I must say, I've actually learned something because I think it was in this uh, lesson eight. So it's it's I think it's ten days. So you get these nuggets of information daily. And I really learned something on day eight because they say. Uh, Second best is to get an influencer or a newsroom. I'm, I'm reading this from my notes. Is to get an influencer or a newsroom to debunk the rumor. It sounds odd, but simply by reporting the rumor, they are giving it oxygen, oxygen and can fuel the fire. This is a tactic used by white supremacists in the past. Uh, has been to post a few flyers on a college campus announcing an event or protest, and they hope that the college newspaper will report it as a fact, and that will lead to national coverage giving it exposure to their cause. And I thought, wow, this is a really interesting tactic, which I wasn't aware of. Do you happen to have these kinds of maybe uh, communities or groups that are applying these tactics in Sweden that you know of? Oh, well, um, I, I don't really know, actually. <laughs> but, but I really like the idea of having like small updates and getting in your phone to just be reminded by it um, often and, and not just yeah. a one one time thing that you do. Yeah. So would, would this be something that, that would fit DN to offer as a service to, to a certain type of demographic or readership to have this kind of courses? Do you do this kind of, you could call it service journalism or something? Yeah, yeah, probably, yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the DN readers are really into knowledge and we just launched, launched a quiz app that the readers love and uh, I think this could be like the other part or the other side of it, it could be yeah. like first take the course and then take the quiz or something like that. Yeah, yeah, interesting. So then you make a combination of that. Yeah, cool. So and then, then there's another thing and I must admit that I don't find immediate relevance for journalists that are publishing. Uh, content, but it could be for, for research or maybe the entertainment section. This is something called, maybe you've come across it called mm -hmm, uh, dot app, and it's double m h double m dot app. And um, the its founder joked, it's important to have a name you can say while eating, so that's why it's called mm hmm. And it's a it's a virtual camera that can be used with Zoom, Google Meet, YouTube, and other video streaming services. And um, this, mm -hmm, they consider themselves a new and better way to communicate over video. It's created by Phil Libin, and he used to lead Evernote, which I think most people are familiar with, the note-taking. And, well, it grew much bigger than just note-taking. It's in private beta. And uh, here you can see, so you can use sort of some sort of slides and backgrounds. And there are these things where you can personalize colors, and you can have animated backgrounds and, and all kinds of stuff. And um, and then, well, it looks like this. So this is the room you're in or the presenter. And I've done, um, if, if, I'm, if I may, I've done a little experiment myself. And this is uh, the result of that. But let's, uh, let's keep it here for now. So um, yeah, there's two things to share. The first one was quite serious, the first draft news um, WhatsApp course. And this is a video, uh, you know, I don't know, reinventing the video uh, webcam uh, meeting obviously during the COVID-19 
uh, people got bored by this, using the same images, and this could be a relief for some. But I don't know what the journalistic approach or application would be. Do you have any idea, any suggestion? <laughs> Well, I think this would definitely spice up the other, other I mean, <laughs> all those dull uh, video meetings, yeah. so definitely. Maybe for doing, when you're doing with your team, doing brainstorms for new products over video, this might help to get you in the right mood. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Inspiring. <laughs> well, let's, um, let's go um, finish this item and we'll go on to the next item. And I've got a, a little banner again and let me show it. And that's the... Um, um, the stop it journalist.